Hey fellow SweetScript developers, Eric from Stoic Software here again, and in this video we will continue our series on transitioning from SweetScript 1.0 to 2.0. In this edition we look at field lookups, which are a faster way of retrieving body level data from related records. Now before we get started, every video I create is part of my free effective SweetScript email list where Every day I dig into more details and answer questions from readers on the topic for the week. You can find out more details and get signed up at EffectiveSweetScript.com. You'll find a link in the video description. All right, let's get started. NetSuite's lookup feature allows developers to very quickly retrieve body level data for a particular record without having to load the entire record. Uh, this feature is provided by the NLAPI lookup field function in SweetScript 1.0. And in the n slash search modules lookup fields method in SweetScript 2.0. So we are introducing a new module, the n slash n slash search module. And here we see a one-to-one -one relationship between the 1.0 and 2.0 lookup functions. They behave largely the same as well. The lookup functionality is contained in the search module because under the hood, a lookup is a search with specific filters on the record type and the record ID. Uh, thus, you can expect that a lookup will always have similar performance to a search. We can use lookups to retrieve a single field or multiple fields from a specific record. And we can even use it to retrieve data from related records uh, through joined fields. So let's look at an example for each of those situations. To put a little business context around our examples, uh, we'll say we are building something for our customer support manager. She is tasked with doing periodic spot surveys on recent support case work by her team members. So our job is to build something that pulls in relevant contact information from the most recent case closed by an employee. So one possible user flow for this application might be that the manager goes to the employee record of her team member and we put the spot survey data into its own subtab right there on the employee record. To do this, uh, we might have a user event script executing on before load that pulls in and displays the relevant data. Now to ensure that we're staying focused on the lookup functionality, I'm going to skip the UI portions of the code and we'll just zero in on the lookup work. Now the very first piece of information our manager might want to see is simply what is the case number of this employee's most recently closed case. Now we're not concerned here with how we get the ID of the latest case. Uh, we'll just assume that it's retrieved elsewhere and passed into our getCaseData function appropriately. So here we can see how we use lookups to retrieve a single body field from a record. Uh, so here we are retrieving the case number from the specified uh, case ID. And notice the difference in how we access the resulting data between 1.0 and 2.0 in the log statements. In 1.0, when we only provide a single column to NLAPI lookup field, then only the value of that field is returned. In 2.0, the lookup fields method always returns an object with the columns as the properties, even when there's only a single column. Now the 1.0 approach here might seem more convenient to some, 
but let's look at what happens when we inevitably get a request uh, for more data as part of this feature. So now along with the case number, we want to see its created date, its date closed, and the email address that the customer provided. Now when I changed to retrieving multiple fields, I had to rewrite a lot of my 1.0 code. Because I specified multiple columns, NLAPI lookup field now returns an object with the properties or the columns as properties, uh, much like the 2.0 method already was doing. Uh, I've modified the log message accordingly to print out the entire result object. But what I had to do there was wrap it in a json.stringify call. Um, and notice that I did not have to do that on the 2.0 side because the log module automatically stringifies uh, any object that you pass as the details property. Now in 2.0, since I was already expecting lookup fields to return an object, I merely changed my columns property to a list of the columns that I want. So this makes the 2.0 API a bit more consistent than its 1.0 counterpart in that the 2.0 version always returns an object, no matter how many columns you're retrieving. Now I also promised that we could look up joined fields, meaning fields from records linked to the one we are searching. Uh, in our example, the whole point here is to provide the customer support manager with relevant contact information from the case. And we've already pulled in the email address on the case, but we also want to see the customer's uh, main phone number, as well as the primary contact's email address and phone number. So in order to specify joined fields, we use the dot syntax. Uh, so we do join ID dot field ID or column ID. You can uh, use the records browser to identify the available joins for a record. Now be aware that when you're using the records browser to identify lookup columns, you will be using the search columns section for the record, not the field IDs. So recall that under the hood, a lookup is just a search. So it's gonna behave exactly the same. All of your columns should come from the search columns list, not the field IDs list in the records browser. And lastly here, I've added a second log statement in the 2.0 code so that you can see a little bit of uh, what I would consider weirdness when you're trying to read joined fields. So the key name in the output from the joined columns is the entire join ID dot column ID string with the dot included. And so because that dot gets included in there, we have to use this uh, special uh, square bracket index syntax rather than the normal dot syntax we would use um, with say the email or the end date, one of the other flat columns. Now the largest advantage that lookups give us over loading the record is that it executes faster and uses less governance. This works on both standard and custom records and it also involves significantly less code than loading the entire record. Uh, unfortunately, we can't look up data from sublists. If you need to retrieve data from sublist fields, you will need to perform a search or load the record. Um, the other limitation on lookups is that 
and all searches in general is that NetSuite only allows a single level of joins. Um, so we couldn't, back in our example, we couldn't go from the case to the customer to the sales rep on the customer, for instance. We can only go one level from the case to the customer. All right, that's it for this lesson. Now you've seen how to transition your lookups to SuiteScript 2.0. If you liked what you saw here, hit that thumbs up button. Go share what you learned with somebody else. Click subscribe to stay tuned to the rest of our series on transitioning from SuiteScript 1.0 to 2.0. And as always, thanks for watching. Keep learning, keep sharing, and I'll see you next time.